church service today and what the people have been, been requesting prayer for. We pray that the Lord will have his way up in each and every person. We pray that the Lord's Spirit will just draw an eye to them. Lord, there's many requests you made known. Some prayed for their mothers. Some prayed for their brothers. Some have prayed for other family members. And so we're, well, we're just asking the Lord to help us. Help these people today. Lord, we pray for one another. We're praying for grandchildren, Lord. And also we're praying for our children. Lord, we pray that you have a hand up on each situation, upon each and every person. We pray that God's Spirit will move in the midst of us today. As we give God the glory, God the praise, we thank you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, you are the words of the music. Amen. You are the words of the music. You are the song that I sing. You are the melody. You are the harmony. Praise Jesus. 
morning that uh, I want to share with the congregation. Uh, Christmas is coming, and I was supposed to do this last Sunday, but uh, it's not here. But uh, there will be a card being passed around for congregation to sign, and when you sign that card, uh, if you would like, you can put a offering in there for the Parsons family. Uh, you can write a check, that's acceptable. Uh, however, you, 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 whatever the Lord lays on your heart, feel free to give. Now, I have a letter here that was passed on to me that came from Yakima, our headquarters. Uh, that's in Washington, for those of you in Germany that may not know where Yakima is. Uh, and it's asking that we remember our family, and specifically our pastor. Now, he does a good job, does he not? Amen. Amen. You know we're small in number this morning, but I, I hear pretty good applause out there. Uh, there is a, another thing on my list of things to do here, and that is uh, the church needs greeting cards. Now, if you have an extra box of greeting cards, whatever they might be, get well, see you soon, been missing you, uh, whatever. Uh, if they're like new, and got a good envelope, uh, the church could use those greeting cards. And so, uh, anniversaries, even the blank cards, we can, we can fill those out. And so, that's my shopping list for this morning. I want to continue in our reading uh, in Romans, again, chapter 12. This will be the last reading out of Romans 12. Uh, and I'm going to pick it up this morning at, at verse 19. Now, I read this, I believe, last Sunday, last time I read scripture out of Romans 12. But I wanted to get this in context here. So, verse Chapter, Romans chapter 12, verse 19. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt be coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. And uh, do we have our ushers this morning? <laughs> Would the ushers come forward, please? The, the Lord loves a cheerful giver. And if you give to him, it should not be reluctantly. And I know in the past, some of us here this morning have given way beyond their needs. And so uh, we're thankful that they do that cheerfully. And so during this pandemic that we've been going through, our congregation here in the building has been rather shy of folks, a lot of folks, but the monies have still come in. Why? Because they're cheerful giving. And so if you're here this morning, let us pray over the altar. Lord, we thank you and praise you for your love and your goodness and your mercy and your provision, Lord, to each and every one of us. And Lord, this morning as we pay our tithes and bring our offerings to you, we ask now, Lord, that you receive them as we give them cheerfully. And Lord, bless them and multiply them for the kingdom's sake. For we ask it in Jesus' name. And everybody says, Amen. 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 Appreciate that, Brother Lyman. Amen. You guys appreciate Brother Lyman, don't you? Yeah. yeah. He's a faithful, faithful man. I appreciate him so much. And uh, does his very best to help out. I want you to know how much I appreciate him, Sister Lyman. Amen. Well, I got one Christmas song that I know, and I'll sing it to you. 
long time ago in Bethlehem, the holy Bible says that Mary's boy child. seems like to me it's working pretty good. But still, I just, you know how it is. You just want to go kind of slow with it. This here is a good leaning stick. How many know what I'm talking about? I can lean like this. Amen. But the Lord has given me kind of a direction today. Take a break from that series. Because uh, now I'm coming to the point where angels among us, I'll be coming to the Christmas angels. Where they watch the baby being born announced the coming of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. So we're not there yet. And so the Lord wanted me to share something else to you today. That's about 
what God does, or what does God say about encouragement? And so this is what I want you to realize. This is the time that we need to encourage one another. Amen. Amen? And it's a good time to encourage one another. I know in our family, uh, not my particular situation with my daughter or my wife, but my grandsons needed a, a grandson been needing a lot of encouragement because he's going through a lot of things in his life right now. Uh, heading towards a divorce. Mm -hmm. I mean, no, divorces are just not fun at all. No, no. Even though I've never been in one, I have been with people that have been through divorces. And it's really untimely. It's really difficult. It's, uh, it's believe it or not, it's egregious. It's just a, a time of despair and sometimes of anger. And sometimes they feel like they're hopeless, this hopelessness. There's so many variables that happen when people go through all types of things of that nature. And so they need to be encouraged. And what's sad about it is I found out that not only the husband or the wife is being affected by the divorce, but the children are being oh, affected, yeah, yeah. the grandchildren, all of them being affected by the outcome of what is taking place. And so I've been watching a grandson and the adopted granddaughter that I have, and they're working their way towards the dissolution or of their marriage. And it's just really difficult, not only in them, but also us, us. Because in my family, we just never really believed in divorce. How many understand that? I was raised up, once once you marry, you marry for life. You know, that's the way my family has always been traditionally been. But I've watched over the years, brothers, uh, sisters, you know, enable themselves into a time of divorce. Not because they wanted to, but because the way things happen. And... On top of it all, it's Christmas, it's the holiday season, and that and that adds a lot more uh, layers of things that are happening in people's lives. And not only that, but some of you have been going through, if you're not going through sickness, your family's been going through it. Family members have been going through one sickness after another, it seems like. But I want you to know God is still on the throne. Amen. He's able to help us, Amen. and we're able to be encouraged. It's important that we encourage one another during these difficult times. <laughs> and not only that, but we've been faced with a pandemic that's just literally has neutralized every yeah. effort our country is trying. <laughs> Everything people are trying to do to keep from from getting this that uh, getting this. You know, this plague or this this problem, they end up getting it anyway. And many people have lost family, have lost loved ones. Loved ones became sick. Um, my daughter shared to me the place she worked for. Ten of the people came down with it and passed away of it. And uh, where she works, and said they lost ten of the residents, which they were elderly, elderly residents. So we've been doing everything we can to prepare you, prepare the elderly. If you think you're sick, don't go around anybody that's especially elderly at all. Stay away from them. Can you say that? And uh, that's what I want you to do and want you to realize. Be careful because guess what? Uh, you can infect them even though you're younger and it's happening. Younger people don't seem to... Uh, to be affected as much as the elderly are. But I want you to know something. You and I need to be careful and safeguard our elderly. Amen? Amen. Especially those that are sick, we need to safeguard. And so I was sharing to my grandson, and I said, now, if you or the children get sick, don't come upstairs, whatever you do. If you do, I'm going to get my cross out. Amen? <laughs> get me a mallet and a steak. <laughs> We're going to go to, we're going to, go to business then. And so anyway, he said, he said, Grandpa, if we, something happens, we'll make sure. We'll watch out. I said, okay. 
be saved. That's what I'm saying. Yes. And be encouraged. Amen. Would you pray for me today as we pray? Yes. May the Lord bless this day, bless this hour, as we come to the reading of the scriptures and the preaching of the gospel. And Father, I thank you for allowing me to be the pastor of this church. Is it a perfect church? No. Am I a perfect pastor? No. But Lord, we seem to adapt to one another. And I thank you for that. And I thank you for allowing me to be here. Even with all of our imperfections, we're doing the very best we can. Not only to help one another, but to encourage one another. And so Lord, I ask you right now, let my eyes be your eyes. Let my ears be your ears. Let my mouth be your mouth that I completely submit myself to thy Holy Spirit. O Lord, right now, he that have an ear, she that have an ear, let them hear what the Spirit may reveal to them. I thank you again in that wonderful name of Jesus. Amen, amen. 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 As we continue with today, wow, these are tough times that we're living in. Not only we're dealing with day-to-day -day events within our lives, but we're dealing with events that are beyond our control. Yes. But with God, all things are possible. And not only for me, but for all of us. Can you say amen to that? J.J. Packer said, the stars may fall, but God's promises will stand and be fulfilled. How many believe that? <laughs> amen. J.J. Packer said that. So we're living in tough times. And it's not easy living in tough times. We got people going through some serious issues in their life. Amen. Amen. And let me tell you something. These things are pandemic-wise. We got things that are totally beyond our control. How many can agree with that? Mm -hmm. It's totally beyond our control. The Holy Spirit told me this to tell you this week. He said there's nothing you can do about it but pray Amen. and wait. And I want you to realize that. You need to pray and wait. Because there's nothing you and I can do about this thing. He said the only one can cure this plague, he said, is God. He said God is the only one. And the only way God is going to cure this plague is when we fall down before him and we ask him. Can you say amen? amen. How many have been asking God to heal our nation and oh, our yes, country yes, yes. of this plague? Yes. Keep doing it. He said it's working. God is hearing you. And I want you to realize that. So there's nothing, there's some things we can do, but, but a lot of things we can't do. We can pray, we can believe, and we can hope. But we can't fortify or make a cure. Only those that God gives the ability to do those things can do that. And so today I want to talk to you about hope and encouragement. Can you say amen? It's important that we build each other up. First Thessalonians chapter 3, Therefore, when we could no longer endure it, we thought it good to be left in Athens alone. The apostle speaking directly from his heart. I talked about this scripture here a while back, but the Lord brought me to, back to it again. He said, I want you to present this today. And he said, I sent Timothy, our brother, and minister of God and our fellow laborer in the gospel of Christ to establish you, to encourage you concerning your faith. I want you to know God has sent me here to encourage you. I want you to realize that. That's one of the reasons I came in this area is to encourage you and let you know that God is still on his throne and always will be. God will always do the great thing that needs to be done. God is the one that works all the miracles. Am I right, Brother Lightman? He's the only one that can bring this miracle about. Only God can. But God chooses to use people to illustrate his will. Not only that, but to enable his will. God uses presidents, amen. He uses pharmaceutical groups to bring forth Whatever needs to be done to help countries like ours. But when it all comes down to it, this knowledge is given from above. Can you say amen? It comes from God. And I want you to realize that today. It's my desire to encourage you. 
Paul set Timothy ahead of him to encourage the group of people that were having a difficult time at the local church. And so I've been sent by my denomination to come and believe it or not, to encourage you. It's my desire to encourage you and walk with you and be with you through, through the ways of Christ. Amen. And so today, I want you to realize as we look, it's important that we build each other up. Amen. It's important that we build each other up in Christ. It's important that you pat somebody on the back and say, well, you know what? You're doing a good job. Amen. There's nothing wrong with patting somebody on the back. You're doing a good job. Because that's what we need more of. We don't need anyone coming along and saying, well, all you do is think about yourself and talk about yourself. What you need to do is talk about others. Amen. It's important that you build each other up in Christ. As Paul saw this, he needed to send a man to these people to let them know that he was concerned. He understood what they were going through. And I want you to realize today, I'm in this pandemic with you. Can you say amen? Jesus. I'm in it up to my gills as much <laughs> as you are. I wish it was behind us. How many agree with that? Amen. I wish we didn't have to wear a mask when we go yeah. into a grocery store. Yeah. I wish we didn't have to wear a mask when we walk into any type of office building or, or into any type of workplace. But guess what? In order to get through it, we need to do what we need to do. And so I want you to realize that. And I don't know about you, but when I go into a store, I want to wear a mask because I don't know if there's someone infected or not because I don't need to have that type of problem in my life. How about you? Amen. I need to have more of Jesus Christ in me. Can you say amen? I need to have more of his love in me, amen, and understanding and compassion and empathy. I need to understand that people are going through terrible times right now and hard times because guess what? These are the times of the years that people, believe it or not, suffer the most. Mm -hmm. I've been watching people come in from the, into the businesses because of the cold outside and these people don't have anywhere to live. Probably sleeping under a bridge somewhere or underneath a bush or a tree to stay warm. One time I watched it I walked by a, a dental office and I noticed somebody was sleeping underneath the bush there trying to stay warm. And, and so I want you to realize it's hard time right now on those people. A while back here, I was talking to somebody. And, and uh, you know, we've seen people. We've watched these homeless people. And you give them money and they go buy booze or they go buy cigarettes. And, and you begin to think, well, I don't want to give them the money to do that. I don't want to give them the money. And one time it was asked a person that was, I said, well, why do you take this money we give you and go buy liquor? And the person said, he said, well, he said that nighttime, he said, I have nowhere to sleep. And he said, it's so cold outside. He said, that the only thing that warms me up is drinking the alcohol. And he said, it allows me to fall asleep. It numbs me, he said. He said, that's the reason I drink the alcohol, is to stay warm. He said, it's really hard on me if I don't have it. And, uh, you know, because they don't have enough blankets. They don't have enough other type of things to secure them. So, and when I started thinking of that, I said, you know what? I'm not going to be the judge from now. If God tells me to give somebody some money, and if they go buy the liquor with it, so let it be. Can you say amen to that? Amen. I'm going to do what God told me to do. And I'm going to let God judge that person on their own merit. Can you say amen to that? Amen. Because once it leaves my hand, it's no longer my responsibility. Someone say amen or amen. amen. Once it leaves my hand, guess what? And I give it to somebody, it's no longer my problem. Except I need to pray for them. Hello? I need to pray for them. So I want you to understand what is happening on the other side. Of, well, why don't they go get a job? Well, it's kind of hard for them to go get a job. I'll tell you the reason why they can't go get a job is because they don't got no work record no more. They don't have a work record. They don't have a place to live. 
They don't have anywhere where they can report. Do you understand? There's so many variables in it anymore. But this isn't the time that we turn around and turn off our heart of compassion or our heart of empathy. Someone say amen. 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 This isn't the time to turn it off. This is the time we need to turn it on. Someone say amen or old me. We need to turn on our empathy. We need to turn on our compassion. We need to turn it on. Not off. Do not fear for I am with you. Do not anxiously look about you for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Surely I will help you. Surely I will uphold you within my righteous hand. Isaiah 41.10 The world is full of events that will shake our faith. 1 Thessalonians 3 That no one should be shaken by these afflictions. For you yourselves know that we are appointed to this. The world is full of things that are going to shake our foundations. Shake our faith. Shake what's happening. I don't know about you right now, but this pandemic has reshaped America. Someone say yeah. amen or old yeah. me. This pandemic has reshaped the world. Someone say amen or old me. Amen. Let me tell you, these things have caused problems in our lives. But guess what? We still got to keep living. Someone say amen or old yeah. me. Yeah. We got to keep going. We can't keep up. We got to hold on. Brother John, you got to make it. Say amen or old me. Amen. You got to do it. Amen. Woo. You're too close to the finish line now. The world is full of events that will shake our faith. But guess what? I know that there's a rock out there that I can lean on. His name is Jesus Christ. Someone say amen or amen. I know he will lead me. I know he will be with me. Wherever I go, he is before me. He shapes my life. Someone say amen. amen. I don't know about you, but I need God in my life right now. I need Jesus Christ in my life. I need hope right now. Because there's too much out there that's against me. And that's why the Bible said if God is for us, who could be against us? Amen. As we continue, the best time to encourage is when people are going through hard times. 1 Thessalonians 3 Verse 4, for in fact, we told you before when we were with you that we would suffer tribulation just as it happened. And you know this. You and I will suffer tribulation. You and I will go through these type of problems in our life. You and I will have the storms of life will pound on us. You and I will have good times and bad times. The Bible says the rain will fall on the just as well as the unjust. Let me tell you, it's going to happen. But you can have your chin up or you can have it down. You can look up or you can look down. It's up to you how you want to face it. You want to face it going in strong or you want to face it going in weak. It's up to you. This It's, a, it's so important that you and I Focus our vision. Focus our life after the manner of Christ. Amen. In all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. Romans 8, verse 28. In all things, God works for the good of those who love him. God is working for the good of you that love him. If you love God, he's working for you. If you trust God, he's working for you. If you hope in God, he's working for you. Yes. Even though you've gone through tribulation. Even though you are going through disappointments right now. Nobody likes to be disappointed. But it's bound to happen sooner or later. Am I right? It's bound to happen sooner or later. And how we face it. Is how God is going to reward us with it. Amen. So I want you to realize that. The best time to encourage is when people are going through hard times. It's okay to share to your brother or sister you're going to make it. You're going to be all right. Hang in there. God is with you. Amen. As we continue, God allows these things to happen to know our faith. For in 
For this reason, when I could no longer endure it, I said to you, know your faith. See, God wants to know our faith. He wants to know what's happening in our lives. He wants to know if we're going to come through this or not. He wants to see if we're going to come overcome it or not. God wants to know our faith. The apostle said here, God allows things where he, he can know our faith. Lest by some means the tempter had tempted you and our labor might be in vain. Sometimes the enemy will come and he will do everything he can to seduce you, to cause you to give up your Christian experience. To cause you to give up and come into church. He will do everything he can to placate your life. To keep you from becoming more involved with God. It's important that you complete that which has begun in your life. Do not give it up. Do not give up your standing in Christ. Do not give up your position in Christ. Do not give it up. Someone say amen or amen. amen. Don't give it up. Let God have his way in your life. Because God wants to know your faith. God wants to know your faith. He wants to know your faith. And that's why he allows the storms to come in. That's why he allows the temptations to come. And try to vex you seriously. Hello? Hello? You know, the storm drives me towards God. Can you say amen? Amen. amen? But temptation lures me away from God. Hello. That's the difference from the trials and temptations. Trials will drive you to God. But temptations will lure you away from God. I may mean, have been through a temptation that was so sore and vexed. Wow. It just totally immobilized your thought patterns. Trying everything in the world to destroy that which was good. That's what temptation does. Temptation tries to destroy, to lure you, to destroy everything that's within you that is good. Bible says the love of money is the root of all evil. It doesn't say money is the root of evil. Everybody needs money to pay their bills. Someone say amen. 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 Everybody needs money to pay their taxes. Someone say amen. 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 Everybody needs money to make those car payments. Someone say amen or amen. amen. Those house payments. Amen. But the love of money is a whole different nature of itself. Hello. When you love money more than you love God, then it becomes a problem. When you love money more than you love your family, then it becomes a problem. When you love money more than you love your church, guess what? It becomes a problem. When you love money more than you love anything else, that's when it becomes a problem. Hello. But we need money. We need money to buy Christmas gifts. Can you say amen? We need money to buy our lunch. Hello. Come on now. Try to go into Cozy Kitchen and, <laughs> and buy lunch without paying money. They're not going to be very happy with you. They're going to be really upset at you. He said, well, you know this is the place that takes money. Well, I didn't have any money, but I wanted to eat anyway. <laughs> this is not a free establishment. This isn't free food. Everybody around here works a job like everybody else does. You need to pay your bill. Well, let me just say a prayer for you. Well, that ain't going to buy it. <laughs> you might get upset, order you out of that store, but guess what's going to happen? They're probably going to call the local law enforcement and say, we got a deadbeat that won't pay his bill. Will you come here real quick? <laughs> yeah. 
Hello? Takes money. But the love of money is rude to evil, sister. It's bad for you. Love it. When you love it more than you love God, it becomes a problem. See, that's the thing about temptation. Temptation lures you from God. But tribulation will push you towards God. A lot of people can't tell the difference in the two. They think both of them are the same. They're not. Temptation and tribulation are totally different phrases. Let me move on. Well, wait a minute. Go back. I didn't get that part, did I? Our faith in God is what carries us through the hard times. Our faith is going to be tested. Our faith determines the outlook upon events that shape our lives. Our faith. Do you have faith to overcome this trial? Do you have faith to overcome this temptation? This is what's going to shape your life, your destiny for Christ. Amen. Scripture says that we are justified by our faith. Romans 5, 1. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. You are so much stronger than you think you are. Amen. You are so much stronger than you're willing to understand that you are. You are more stronger than you realize you can overcome temptation. You can overcome trials. You can overcome tribulation. You're much stronger than you give yourself credit for. Can you say amen? amen. You guys are quiet today. <laughs> and that we are to rejoice with hope. Romans 5. Verse 2, though, through whom we also have access by faith, this access gives us immediate opening or door opening into this grace which we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. So we rejoice in our hope. We rejoice in the perfect plan that God has established. We rejoice because we overcame. We rejoice because it's behind us now. Amen. We rejoice Amen. because we can look to future events that are going to take place. We can rejoice that we don't have to do it all over again. Amen. I don't know about you, but I hate flunking a test and have to take it all over again. <laughs> How many ever been there before? Flunk and have to do it all over again. And guess what? You know what the hardest part about the whole thing is? You missed it by one question. Oh, my, don't, don't, that just, don't that just eat your life? And especially if that test costs you 50 bucks. I mean, you know what I'm talking about. One time I was taking a test, and every time I took it, it was 50 bucks. I said, oh, man. I missed it by one question, the person told me. I said, just one question. I said, well, let me take that question now and I'll answer it right. <laughs> no, it don't work that way. So I went and hammered it again, sister. I hammered it for another week. But boy, the next time I took that test, I didn't pass it by one question. I passed it by 10 or 15. Amen. I didn't want to go through that again. Sometimes as Christians, we're just gluttony for pain. Because we end up going through the same identical problem all over and over and over and over and over. When are we ever going to open our eyes and clear our ears to wax and learn the first time around? Why is it that we have to do it over and over and over when God shows us all we have to do is trust him and he gives to it the first time? Amen. 
and that we are to rejoice with our hope. Yes. I made it to church, praise God. I made it. Man, I could scratch this Sunday off. It's looking good. <laughs> I'm happy. I know God's happy because I came to church. Amen. 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 Yeah. You think God's not happy you go to church? Oh, yeah, he is. Mm -hmm. Well, I just don't feel like going to church. That's the devil beating you up, trying to rob you of a victory. Yes. Yes. Well, I just don't feel good. Well, guess what? Get out of bed, come anyway. <laughs> Amen. There's a lot of times I don't feel good, but I get up and do it anyway. How many know what I'm talking about? Yes. I can understand if you're sick. Don't get me wrong. I'm not, no. No. not saying anything there. But what I'm saying, if there's nothing wrong with you, and you don't feel like doing it, get up and do it anyway. Amen. You think I like doing those exercises every day? <laughs> she was asking me the other day, question me, said, are you doing your exercises? I said, I, I walked in here without this cane. What do you think of that? <laughs> Amen. I could even put her on my head, shoulder down. I don't need it too bad as much as I used to need it. Praise God. I was thinking about going golfing with it now. <laughs> <laughs> Use it as a golf club. For a putter. Yeah. But it's good to lean on, you know. The one I'm saying is sometimes we just need to ply ourselves. We need to get over these humps and move on to the next one. Move on to the next one. Get over them, then you don't have to go back over them. Am I right? Yeah. And we're to glory in tribulations, Romans 5. And not only that, but we are also glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance, Brother Lyman. You lack, you lack tribulation, you told me. <laughs> he says it's hard. He, he says, I don't pray for tribute or pray for patience. That's what he told me. Because yeah. if you start praying for patience, what's going to happen? You're going to get blasted with tribulation. Hello. <laughs> Have you ever got mad at someone? God, give me patience! Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, a flood. Yes. Well, you're the one opening your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Hello? Amen. You shouldn't have sh shouted out, God, give me patience with her or with him. What happened? More tribulation. More storm. What you want to do is say, God, heal her or kill her. Get her. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. Don't do that. <laughs> heal her or kill her, Lord. <laughs> That's what some people's philosophy might be. <laughs> Word of glory and tribulation. Why, Pastor? Because... It grows perseverance. Where one time we thought about quitting and now we don't. Why? Because we've grown enough to work through it. Amen. Amen. You get a job, you hate it. God gives you perseverance. You start working through it. What happens after a while? You begin to like the job. It's really not the job that's the problem. It's the person working the job is the problem. It's an attitude adjustment. I hate my job. No, what it is, you just hate yourself right now. Someone asked me a while back, you love your job? I said, I do. I love my job. I love it. My daughter told me one day, I said, boy, you do. You just love your job. I said, I do. Love it. Most rewarding thing I could have ever done in my life. Really is. Yes. Really is. Yes. Cool. Most rewarding thing I could have ever done in my entire life. I'm glad God called me to be a pastor. I don't know if my wife likes it, though. Or my daughter <laughs> likes it. But I love it. Because it's rewarding. Do you see what I mean? 
And I just want you to know we're back to here. Why, Pastor? Because it grows perseverance. When you and I glory in our tribulation, oh God, thank, thank you for allowing me to come through this. Lord, it could have been a lot worse. Thank you. And God says, you know what? I think he's got it. I think he got it. But when we get up, I can't stand it no more. I hate it, God. I hate it. Take another lap around Mount Sinai. <laughs> Until you learn your lesson. Yeah. Until you quit your whining and your complaining. Hello. Yeah. That's what happened. He told Israel to do. They get out there, start belly aching. He sent them around Mount Sinai again. Did that for forty years. You would have thought they would have got it the first year. <laughs> well, those people are really stubborn and hard headed, aren't they? <laughs> you think it'd take me forty years to wake up? Uh -uh. I would have been I, I would have been making amends with God. I've been out there building altars all over the place. I said, I'm not with that group. They're crazy. I, I'm over here with you, God. I'd be building altars. I'd be offering everything I could for atonement. Not these guys. Every time we take them to this place. Oh, are we going to eat this feed all of our life? This quail? I'm sick and tired of eating quail. I'm sick and tired of eating manna. How would you like to have food furnished to you every day, free of charge? Mm. <laughs> How would you like to have clothes that never wear out? They had the same clothes for 40 years. I think I've got some in my closet. That shows you the Lord is with me. Isn't it? <laughs> my clothes aren't wearing out. I like that. How about you guys? Would you pray with me? Father, I thank you for our Lord Jesus Christ. I give you praise and glory and honor. I thank you for everything that you've done for us. All the things that you have allowed us to accomplish. We know we're not perfect. We're not a perfect person here today. Every one of us has sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. We've all sinned here. None of us are perfect. Everyone here still makes mistakes. Some of us make some horrible mistakes. But we have a loving Savior that died on the cross. And his blood has offered us atonement and forgiveness. And I want to say thank you for that, Father. Thank you for the atonement. And the blood of Jesus Christ. Thank you for Jesus Christ being here with us. And we glorify the Lord. We praise Him. We thank you for everything He's done for us. 
Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Would you raise your hand and give God glory, whether you're here at our church service or watching us by Facebook. Raise your hand right now and give God glory. Give God glory because you woke up. Give God glory because you was able to come to church. Give God glory because you made it another week. Give God glory because your family is safe. Give God glory because you have a peace of mind. Give God glory because he loves you and cares for you. Give God glory. I will glory in the cross of Christ. Hallelujah, hallelujah. If I boast on anything, it is that of the Lord. I boast on the Lord. He is surely so, so good and kind to me. I am so thankful for him. And I glorify him today. We thank you again in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Amen. My desire is that you have been encouraged. Encouraged. That is my desire. And I hope that you have today. Amen. Would you stand with me as we dismiss from our service today? May the Lord bless this day. Yes. And go with each and every person and bring us back to the appointed time that we may come back again and give our God glory and praise and honor. We thank the great God of heaven and earth, the God that created the heavens and the earth. And we know him as Jehovah and his son, Jesus Christ. We thank you for this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you.